SSNAT at a comment, Sean Prime and Brenna B, and our special guest, Dante Carter from Carter Media Group, the CEO. Yes. Yes. What's going on? And uh, going telling on? us his story as far as starting off in media himself mm -hmm. and got the call to go ahead and work with Paul Howard and was able to take that and make that to a lucrative career of mm -hmm. business, which is thriving. Yes. Uh, also, behind the scenes, uh, we had Surviving R. Kelly. Kelly, and the reason why we met him, because Gerald Griggs was here. Yeah. And uh, you were in, had something to do with that as well, correct? Yeah, you know, um, working with the, uh, the Savage family, working to help them to um, really be able to tell their story and um, tell it in a way where, where the facts can be um, can be heard, understood, and, and, and really making folks aware of what's going on. Now, for those who don't know who the Savage family is, that's the uh, father and mother of Jocelyn Savage. Mm -hmm. Sister, uh, yeah. The sister as well. Mm -hmm. Jocelyn Savage, of course, one of the alleged girlfriends of R. Kelly. And, uh, you know, there's been some situations happening with that. But again, these are people. These are people who are going through situations and yeah. trying to figure it out like the rest of us trying to figure it yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, as a father, because I remember when, when Gerald Griggs first came to me about this whole story. Mm. And I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm going through the information and trying to um, really just wrap my head around what's going on and what's happening. Right. And I remember talking to my wife about it and it was just dead silence from her side. And mm. I'm kind of looking over there like, you know, hey, babe, what's going on? You know, yeah. you tuned in? Yeah. And uh, she was tuned in, tuned in. Uh, a whole lot more than I was. Yeah. And uh, she said, you know, at some point, black women, we need our fathers, we need our brothers, we need our cousins, our husbands to step into this this right. gap. Yeah. Right. Like we need y'all here with us. And um, you know, as I've started to learn, it, it's it's a very wide gap and really understanding and taking ownership. You know, I'm a I'm a man, and though I might feel like I don't have privilege in America, yeah. I have privilege when it comes to my 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 wife my daughter yes. and it's about taking ownership of that and, and and making a difference with it yeah and i think that's what really what we want even brent and i have mentioned looking at uh, what's happened with administration absolutely is yeah. it an impeachment is it not impeachment well you know this that and the third i don't mm -hmm. know what i do know is that one thing unfortunately that we do not see is some type of um obligation some type of um you know, admittance from our president that, hey, I might have made a mistake. You know, I might have made a mistake. And the same thing, I liken this to the same thing with R. Kelly. I think through everything we heard through R. Kelly or through his people, there's never been a situation where, you know, I might have made a mistake. Well, yeah, well, I mean, I mean, we're talking about 48 victims. Yeah, I mean, the, the number of people that are that, uh, uh, that are coming forward and they're having the conversation, you have to think about how many people still have yet to come forward or have not come forward in, in a public sense, like with the, with this with this series. Um, the acknowledgement just does not seem to exist, but it right. seemed like watching the documentary, he might have thought that he was doing some kind of acknowledgement with the song. And I thought that was such a coward way... Well, of course. You know, to do it. Of well, course. I think his brothers made a lot of acknowledgments on there. They did. They absolutely you know, I, did. I think they helped to paint a good picture of what happened to him, yep. but what's continuing to happen to these yep. women. And, and I the, think there yeah. needs to be accountability, period. And absolutely. the experts. The experts that were kind of explaining, you know, what tends to happen with abuse victims. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times they turn around and they become abusers. Mm -hmm. So if he was in that situation as a young child and he was powerless he then turned around and tried to exude his power over these women based on what happened to him well you know and i think um i'm not sure if y'all um have gotten a chance to check it out but there's a book called brainwashed by tom Burrell, and he's he did a great job of really showing kind of this place that black america is in right now mm -hmm. through the lens of pr and you know, a lot of people ask me why I'm in this space. It wasn't just I started my business and jumped into this space. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I jumped into this space because I saw that there was a need for me to be here. And so if, if for what, since 1619 when we first came to America, if there's been what Burrell calls um, a black inferiority campaign mm -hmm. that's been launched against us, and we have to reprogram ourselves yeah. in terms of showing value. Mm -hmm. Like, that was my whole point. Like, I wanted to show, I wanted the Savage family to know that their voices mattered. I wanted them to know that Joyce's voice matters. I wanted them to know that, that power, money is not going to stop justice and accountability from, from being served. And that's, that's excellent, man. Again, Very much so. Yeah. Because in a, this particular climate that we are in, mm -hmm. and you said something that's very, very uh, interesting as far as 
we got to make sure us as I like to call us the tribe, yeah. how we're being seen, how we're being viewed, because most of the way which everyone has seen us has been through the media. Yeah. There aren't there are some instances, yes, where you meet somebody and you get to know them for who they are, their culture. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest: when you're meeting somebody, unless they become part of your intimate circle, mm -hmm. hey, what's what's going on? Like yeah. you just say things like, hey, how you doing today? Yeah. You know, I'm fine, but deep down inside, there's all kinds of other crap. Yeah, you don't know the backstory. <laughs> yeah. We never really know the backstory. You know what I mean? Like so yeah. unless you really get to know somebody and invite them into your circle, then you really don't get to know that person as an individual. Yeah. So most people get to know us through media and what they see. And I, and I think that's an unfair assessment that, that we've been handed down time and time again, because if you think about it, right, they so we we get our freedom in 1865. Mm -hmm. There's there's no reparations. There's there's no resources. There's just a hey y'all need to pull yourself up by your bootstraps, which is something that we don't even own. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. you know, I think to get to where we are right now mm -hmm. is, um, I mean, it's a huge accomplishment, but there's still so much work to be done. Like yeah. I mean, when you go back and and you look at, um, you look at the economics in the black community, 56 mm -hmm. percent of of women who lead their households, black women who lead their households are under poverty. 56%. We're not talking about in poverty, we're talking about under, under poverty. Yeah. So what about their kids? Yeah. They're obviously going to feel like the world doesn't care about them yeah. because they're under poverty. They lack the resources. They're probably homeless. And so when you hear those stories and you see what needs to be done, like all of this stuff that's happened is a direct result of us coming here back in 1619. And so yeah. until we start to have some hard, tough conversations about what happened to us, how we got to where we are, it's gonna continue this this very uh, dangerous and detrimental cycle. True. Yeah, and I think, and I've gotta be honest, keep, keeping people inside the loop. I think one of the things that is so damaging, yes, we wish that this situation never happened with R. Kelly and the savages and the other different victims, mm -hmm. but I'm just gonna be straight up. Mm -hmm. For being another member of the tribe, someone who looks like us, makes it that much hurtful and that much damaging. And I think because of that, that's one of the reasons why there needs to be swift action. Yeah. Because, again, shouldn't be accepted by anybody at any time. Mm -hmm. But when we look at kings and we look at your kingdom or your queendom, you know, it's the privilege that you've been able to earn. Mm -hmm. R. Kelly did that. Not talking about what he did as far as his personal decisions, but as far as his business ethics. From what we saw on the outside, yeah. it looked like that he was being successful. Mm -hmm. But then when we go ahead and we break it down and we peel back the onion layers and we start to see that it's really rotten inside. And that's what really hurts the most. Well, what, what, what did one of the execs say from the surviving R. Kelly deal? They knew about all this stuff. Right. But one of the top level guys said, you know, he's the reason why these lights are on in here. Right. Yeah. But if you also look at a lot of those top level guys, who do they look like? They don't look like us. No, not at all. And I think at some point, black men need to stand up right along with black women and we need to address these issues. And I think that's a lot of what you're seeing with the surviving R. Kelly. This was a movement that was led by women. Yes. But who came up behind them? Black men. Yeah. So I know there's a there's a lot of people, you know, Lonnie Love and folks. They right. got a whole lot to, a whole lot of things to say about black men. Say, but, yes. yeah. you know, we're trying. Yeah. We're yeah. fighting. Well, you know, again, that's example. that's from different personal that's from personal contact. That's their personal story. So yeah. my personal story with one situation, if I go and I you know, let's just take it out of these knee jerk things. If I go and I eat a piece of lasagna and somebody didn't make it right, I'm gonna say all lasagna sucks. Yeah. But you're going to say right. that's your favorite food. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's the reaction that I had mm -hmm. with that particular situation. So whatever Lonnie Love's situation is, you cannot make that universal law yeah. for every single African American. Right. And I think that's what happens. And again, back to your involvement with R. Kelly and with Gerald Griggs, for you to step up and put yourself in that situation, uh, I definitely applaud you. I appreciate because it. Just yeah. like radio that's not dumbed down yeah. and one of the reasons why I met you I said yeah we gotta have you back on this platform because there's there's a bunch of different radio stations out there that would tell you let's get it let's go ahead and do this and whatever and don't get me wrong don't look at us as not like to have fun yeah. like to have fun right. but there's some other pressing issues that are going on universally that are right in front of us and the more that we out there trying to get it and the more we out there trying to get this car and that car and this better way of life and whatever and secure the bag which, which I'm down with 
But at the same time, what are you securing the bag for? Yeah. Yeah. What are you securing the bag for? To get another flat screen TV? To get a, a, a Bentley? To get, you know, to, to go to uh, Brazil, you know, five times a year? Those things are cool, but there's ways to invest your time and energies and your finances that can actually help yourself and therefore help the tribe as a whole. And what are you sacrificing to get it? You know what I'm saying? That's the big question. What are you sacrificing? Every month in the city of Atlanta, 12,400 men are buying young girls buying them. Mm. You know, these, I met a few women who are actively going out every night and pulling young girls out of this sex trafficking. Yes. And they saw R. Kelly in the nightclub yes. with Joycelyn Savage, with mm -hmm. Azrael Clary. Mm. Yep. That's a known nightclub yep. in Atlanta yep. for sex trafficking. Yep. Like, I'm, I'm tired of that. Yeah. Just imagine all the money that he spent on them for his exploits if he took half of that. I don't know how long the, how long the abuse went on, but if you took half of that and put that into their education mm -hmm. and said, yo, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and send you to college. I'm going to go ahead, what, what trade you want to use? It could be a whole different story. Well, not even that. Take the money and go get yourself fixed. Like, I've gone to therapy, you know, and we, at some point in the black community, we got to have a hard discussion about therapy and getting yeah. help. And really remove that yeah. stigma. I say that all the time in our conversations. We need to not have this, you know, opposition to bettering ourselves and asking for help when we need it and feeling like you have to be strong all the time and any type of vulnerability is a weakness. That's yeah. not true. But, and, and we're damaged. Yeah. The, re the reality is yeah. we're damaged. There's no way there's no way you go through slavery Jim Crow and all this other stuff and you come out and you're perfectly fine. Right. It just doesn't work. I've got way. a theory. got to take care of some quick business and we'll be right back with this conversation. You want to chime in, you can text us 678-613-5857 or you see us live on the stream. Go ahead and chime in on that stream, too. Dante Carter, CEO of Carter Media. We're talking about some great stuff this morning. we got some more stuff on the way here on ITLI. Oh, thank you, Sean. Uh, oh, I had a... Uh... Somebody's chiming in on my live feed. Come to Tampa Bay. I said we want to win a Super Bowl. I will come around back. You see it's working today, right? So it's ran, <laughs> you see it's brain and it's working today. Uh -huh. So now when Comcast says they're going to say, I know, no you're like, wait, what's, what's but the I issue? Think, but I'll tell you what I did, I think. Okay. That's, that's a good point. SSNATL.com, the home of Smart Talk for smarter listeners just like you. And we appreciate you hanging out with us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, for the Cheryl Underwood Show, she comes on at 12. Yes. Talking to Dante Carter. He is the CEO of Carter Media <laughs> and talking some great things as far as taking responsibility. He said something I wanted to come back to, you know, mental health, mm -hmm. being strong, especially in the African-American community, as I say, the tribe. Yeah. Uh, this is not going to be a very popular thing I'm going to say, but I'm, I'm going to tell you one of the reasons why I think this is a sticking point for us because as a man if you're a, one reason why if you're a heterosexual man and you're out there and most heterosexual men go out and we try to do things to obtain our queen mm -hmm. yeah most queens don't want no weak man yeah and as crazy as it sounds, like, well, how do you put that together, Prime? Well, because a lot of times it's like, well, you know, you got to be strong for me because I'm out there and I'm an independent queen. I'm out there getting mine. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you cannot be weak. So sometimes there may be a situation where a man looks at being vulnerable, which we don't have a problem with. We think that's sexy. Yeah. But vulnerability could, is a sign of weakness. And then when you're out there and you're with somebody, and if you're trying to garner their attention to go ahead and build up kingdoms 
you want to show that, hey, I've got all the right answers. But necessarily you don't because you don't hardly know the answer for yourself. Yeah. So what happens in that type of scenario? This scenario goes on on a daily basis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the question, too, is, like, who who is your vulnerability a weakness to? You know, because yeah. I think if it's a weakness, you got to reevaluate that relationship. I feel like even when it comes to my wife and I, I think the level of depth to our, to our marriage comes mm-hmm. from our vulnerability and being real. Being real about the fact that, look, you know, I grew up in a house, single parent household in poverty. Mm-hmm. I didn't have my dad there. So a lot of this stuff is new. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I know we done moved out to the suburbs. Right. And, you know, we trying to, you know, do our little Jefferson's thing. Right, right. But the reality is, is I can't be that guy because there are things that I lack. Right. And I mean, you know, it's, it's so funny. And so this is me being transparent here. Yeah. But so I met my biological father for the first time about a month ago. Oh, wow. And, you know, my wife and I are talking, and she was like, yeah, I think you need to go call your therapist, and y'all need to sit down and have a conversation, mm. you know? And it's not that, oh, Dante, you're weak. It's right. like, this is emotional. It's, this is heavy. Yeah. You, need, you need to talk to somebody who can help you to kind of sift through these feelings the that you're having. Yeah. And, 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 the, and the thing is, a lot of us don't have it. I yeah. mean, you got to ask yourself the question of, why is it that our young men know the outcome of standing out on their on that corner but they'll run out to the corner rather than figure out life right now yeah it's pain yeah, yeah. that's all it comes down to yeah. we got to find ways of dealing with that so how do you use your background and your experiences in life when you are running your company and when you look at different projects you know i i think um for me one of the things that i'm, I'm always very cognizant of is looking at projects that kind of passion and purpose intersect at to mm-hmm. where I know that this project is not going to get my leftovers. It's going to get the very best. And so the more and more that I look at, okay, how passionate am I about this project? Mm-hmm. How passionate am I about making a difference with this project? That's the, whole, that's the only reason I decided to work with attorneys because 90% of the cases that attorneys have involves who? People of color. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Which and is a some, shame. Yeah. yeah. And at some point, you get tired of seeing that. Right. So it's either you can stand on the sidelines exactly. or you can get engaged. Get engaged like, I can't remember the first name, but one of the Koch brothers, when he passed, mm-hmm. and I saw Fox News running, they, they called him a billionaire and activist. Yep. I'm like, how are you going to be a billionaire and an activist? Like, how does that? Well, it works because he was taking care of his community. He was yeah. an activist in his community. Yep. So, okay, well, I need to be a businessman and an activist in my community and make a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dante Carter, Carter Media. What's up next for you? What's up next? Man, we got everything up next, you know. So um, I think it's it's this year, um, you know, there's some, there's a, a campaign that I'm involved in and, and, you know, working on some of these local elections. And, and then there's uh, obviously the big trial coming up April 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so just preparing for that and, and just making sure that everybody from my team is ready and, uh, and my clients are ready. So last question I got for you. When you're dealing with the emotions as I said and very passionate and I appreciate you again but very passionate dealing with these emotions and from your your own trauma that you've been able to sort out and you're seeing these emotions whether it's from Savage Family or someone else you know with a particular project is there times you have to step away to gather yourselves you don't want to go to that side because everyone has that side yeah (laughs) yeah you know whatever that side may be and it may not be too healthy what do you do to make sure we don't go to that side I mean, I, I think it's, it's being clear, you know, maybe shooting my wife a text or giving her a call just saying, hey, you yeah. know, I, I, I might need an hour or two tonight to kind of mm-hmm. process how I'm feeling and what I'm going through. And it might even be shooting my therapist, a, you know, a text. Hey, man, you yeah. got 15, 20 minutes for me right. to sit down yeah. and just, just talk this stuff. Because all of this stuff is heavy. There's yeah. nothing light or easy about any case that, that right. I've had, you know, since, since my company's doors have opened. It's mm-hmm. all been heavy stuff. Um, but then again... If I don't step into the space, who does? Right. Because what a lot of people don't realize is black people in PR, what is it? It was the result of advocacy. Mm-hmm. It was the result of, of getting the word out about what was going on. Mm-hmm. Jim Crow, um, you know, all the things that happened during segregation, the lynching, the killings. Like, that's where black PR came from. And yeah. So when you understand where black PR came from, you understand what you need to continue to do in right. order to be successful in this space. Absolutely. Dante Carter, as I told you, I told you from the beginning, Good smart stuff. individual <laughs> yes, with a lot stuff. of great information. If they want to get in contact with you for a particular project or someone wants to just pick your brain, how do they do that? 
Oh man, you can uh, follow me on all the social media platforms. Send me a message. I'll respond, or my my assistant will respond, or you can send me an email. That's a uh, Dante D O N T A Y E at Carter Media C A R T E R Media M E D I A dot net, and uh, I'll be sure to respond there as well. There you go, just like that. We have some more stuff on the way. SSNATL.com. It is Sean Prime and Brenna B. I uh, want to say thank you again on behalf of Radio Knock Them Down and for yeah. the listeners. Yeah, that's Because right. people need to hear stuff mm-hmm. like that. Thank you so much. I all appreciate right. y'all. Sean Prime and Brenna B. Radio Knock Them Down. <laughs>